Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be all about affordable makeup. I have 25 amazing products for under $6. These products perform extremely well, the quality is amazing, and on top of that, they're affordable. As I was kind of getting ready for this video, I was looking on a bunch of different websites, checking for products and prices, and it's kind of crazy, but makeup is getting so expensive. So in today's video, I really wanted to narrow it down to my favorites, things that I think you will love. You don't have to sacrifice quality for price. These products Products work extremely well and even if they were more expensive than five dollars I would still purchase them and add them to my collection so the fact that they are so affordable is such a bonus I know a lot of you guys are trying to save money and not spend a ton of money on makeup so if you want to refresh your collection try something new but not spend a lot this video is definitely for you I'm going to link everything in the description box below as well as timestamps if you want to jump ahead to a certain category because I'm going to be going over a lot of products and if you guys watch my videos regularly this one might be a little bit repetitive because I have touched on the majority of these products, but I really wanted to put all of them in one video for those of you that are looking for affordable options. Okay, so let's start with eyes. The first product that I'm going to mention is something that I probably talk about every single month, but this is the best eyeshadow palette release that I've seen in 2020 and definitely the best from the drugstore. These are the e.l.f. bite-sized eyeshadow palettes. I have two that I'm going to swatch for you guys. These two are my favorite out of all of the ones that I've tried. These retail for $3 and you can get a complete eye look with one quad or you can purchase two and create a bunch of different looks. If you're looking for affordable shadow that performs like high-end shadow, these are the palettes for you. The matte shadows are so creamy and blendable, and if you struggle with blending your eyeshadow out or it looks very uneven and patchy, try this formula because it's incredibly easy to work with. The metallic shadows remind me a lot of the Natasha Denona metallics. I have a few Natasha Denona palettes in my collection, and I feel like these give you a very similar look on the eyes. They're very smoothing, very shiny, and they're just easy to work with. So if you're looking for some good staple palettes, but you don't even want to spend like 10 or 15 dollars try out these quads from elf they're three dollars and honestly i would pay a lot more than three dollars for them because they perform so well now if you are a fan of single shadows and you like to create your own palettes or you're just looking for one or two colors to add to your collection i definitely recommend the ColourPop super shock shadows they do have pressed powder shadows on their website as well if you prefer that formula but there's something so gorgeous about the Super Shock Shadow formula. I don't typically love to work with a lot of cream shadows and these do have a creamy texture to them but they dry down and they stay in place even on my oily eyelids. I'm going to swatch a few of the shades that I have that are currently available on their website but these are nice if you're looking for a bright color but you don't want a full palette. So if you want a mint or a purple or even a gold these are great because you can refresh your collection for six dollars without buying an entire palette. A newer addition to my collection would be the Essence Melted Chrome Eyeshadows. These look amazing on the eyes as well, but these are more of like a true powder shadow. They feel very, very creamy, so they almost have a similar consistency to the ColourPop Super Shocks, but they're not creams, they're definitely powders. So I find that these stay in place really well. They look like liquid metal on the eyes. They look like high-end shadows. So if you like metallic shadows, these are going to be a great option for you. They have a bunch of different colors to choose from, and they're again, very, very easy to work with and under the $5 price tag. I'm totally a drugstore mascara fan. There are so many great options at the drugstore for under $10, and typically I'll wait until I can get them like buy one, get one half off, or on sale on Ulta Beauty's website, but it can be a little bit more difficult to find mascaras for under the $5 price tag. Essence has a ton of options, but they have so many that I feel like it's hard to recommend them because I don't get the chance to try all of them. Of course, one of my tried and true favorites is the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. This one makes your lashes incredibly long, and I know that some people say this flakes on them or smudges on them. They do have a waterproof version that performs just as great. But if length is your number one goal, this is such a good option. I recently tried the e.l.f. Keep Your Curl Mascara, and I am so impressed by this. It's been a long time since I've tried an e.l.f. mascara, and in the past when I've tried them, I didn't really find them to be super impressive, but I picked this one up randomly, and this gives my lashes amazing volume. It separates them extremely well, and it definitely lifts and curls my lashes. I honestly couldn't believe how well this worked when I used it in a Get Ready With Me for the first time, because in the past, I don't really remember there being an elf mascara that I loved but I have to say that this one performs extremely well it stays in place so well that it's almost a little bit difficult to
to remove at the end of the night, which I'm okay with because then it ensures that it won't flake or smudge on me. But if you're looking for a good lifting, curling, separating formula, this is the one to try. I picked up this e.l.f. H2O proof eyeliner pen randomly at some point last year. I think I was at the drugstore and it just kind of jumped out at me, but I've really been enjoying it over the past few months. I kind of go back and forth on whether or not I like felt tip liners and I'm kind of going through this phase where I love them because I'm able to have so much control when I'm applying my liquid liner. The product comes out perfectly and what I like about this felt tip pen is that it's a little bit longer. So I'm able to create a wing very, very easily. This formula is nice because it stays in place extremely well. It's definitely smudge proof. It's waterproof for the most part. I'm kind of dealing with some seasonal allergies. So on days where my eyes are extremely watery, I do feel like my eyeliner will kind of move or come off by the end of the day. But if your eyes are just oily or you know you don't need an extremely waterproof eyeliner, I think you'll enjoy this one. I do like this formula and most days I don't have any issue and I just love the fact that it does stay in place pretty well. I forgot to mention the e.l.f. liquid glitter shadow when I was talking about eyeshadow earlier. I love this formula. I tried it randomly a few months ago and I was really impressed by it. I do feel like brands are releasing a ton of liquid shadows right now. It must be trendy or you know just something that a lot of brands have been doing lately because I've been seeing it everywhere. And what's nice about this formula is that of course, it's affordable, but it looks so good on the eyes. If you like liquid shadows, you'll enjoy these. They don't flake on me by the end of the day. You can layer them under powder shadow or on top of powder shadow, which is nice because they're really easy to work with. And of course, they are affordable. So if liquid or glitter shadows are something you want to try out, but you don't want to spend the money on a high-end option, definitely try these out. They're really affordable and you can try the trend without spending a ton of money. There are a lot of great affordable brow pencils. My favorite one that's under $6 is the LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencil. I don't currently have it with me because I used mine up a few months ago and I haven't repurchased it because I'm kind of working my way through a couple of other products, but that one is a great option. It's really affordable and I feel like it's pretty comparable to my Anastasia Brow Wiz. I have a rediscovered favorite to share with you guys. The Essence Make Me Brow Eyebrow Gel Mascara is such a good option and I'm pretty sure this retails for $3. When I first purchased this product, they only had a few shades and then I recently repurchased it it's probably been like a year or two and they've definitely added a few more shades, which is great. What's nice about this brow gel is the fact that it is tinted, so it adds that hint of color and it does lock your brows into place, but it also has those fibers. So if you have very sparse brows, it's going to add to them and make them look really voluminous and full. So I do enjoy this formula a lot. I also recently tried the e.l.f. Wow Brow. And again, I'm so impressed by this. I love the fact that there are certain such great options for under the $5 price tag. I would say these formulas are very, very similar. So if you have access to one and not the other, you could really go with either option. I would say the main difference for me is the Essence Brow Gel is maybe like slightly more of a wet formula. The e.l.f. brow gel almost feels like the Essence one after I've used it for a few weeks and it starts to dry out a little bit. So if the Essence brow gel is a little bit too wet for you, then you might like the e.l.f. one a little bit better. I also like the brush on the e.l.f. brow gel just a little bit better because I feel like it's a little bit softer so I can comb through my brows and it just kind of deposits the product a little bit more nicely. I have three different blush formulas to share with you guys. I really like the blush from Essence. They have four different options. I have two. I know they have some matte options and some shimmer options, but these are nice because they're just very effortless. They blend out really nicely on the skin and they're not they're not super richly pigmented. So if you have a deeper skin tone or you like really bright blush, you might wanna skip over this formula because I do find that I get like a very subtle flush overall. I am wearing one today. I'm wearing the shade Bespoke and I like this because it's kind of like a blush and bronzer all in one on my skin tone. It does have like a very natural sheen and they're just easy to work with. So if you're someone who likes subtle blush, then I think you'll enjoy this formula. I also really like these blush boxes from Catrice. These stay in place really well. I was checking out the shades that they offered yesterday and they also have like a really deep berry. So again, if you have a dark skin tone or you like a really intense blush, that might be a great option for you. These are matte blushes, but again, they're really blendable. They're not chalky like some other matte formulas can be and they do stay in place well. They claim that they are water and sweat proof. On my oily skin, I feel like they're still there at the end of the night and they just blend out easily. So again, I do recommend these if you do like more of a matte formula. On 
honestly, out of all of the blushes that I'm recommending, I would say that the e.l.f. primer infused blushes are probably the best option if you're looking for a long wearing blendable formula. They also have a bunch of shades to choose from, including some really soft, subtle shades and some really intense, bright shades. So I think they are the most inclusive when it comes to having a blush color for all skin tones. There are just regular matte blushes that have no shimmer and then some that have a hint of shimmer and a little bit of a luminous glow. So there really are a lot of options to choose from and I think that this formula is really smooth and blendable but it does last on the skin really well. Along the same lines I always recommend the e.l.f. primer infused bronzer. I know I talk about this so much but again this formula is just so good. It's just as good as a lot of my high-end options. I did a video fairly recently where I ranked all of my bronzer formulas and I think this was number three and number two and three are pretty similar so honestly it's one of my top three bronzers and I think it's just as good as a lot of the high-end formulas I've tried. I actually only have one highlighter in my collection for under six dollars but it's a good one. This one is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is such a soft subtle everyday formula so if you don't want a really intense blinding highlight you're going to enjoy this one. They did come out with a deeper version called the Pure Nude Sunlighter. I'll put a picture on the screen for you guys so you can see what it looks like. That one is a little bit more bronzy and golden and then they also have two colorful shades like a purpley one and a green one. So this is just a good formula. It's not too intense. It's not a metallic formula by any means. It's very soft, very subtle. So if you don't want anything you know, too over the top, this is a good formula to try. I would say out of all of the categories, the category where I had the most difficulty finding products for under $6 would be the complexion category, face products. So please let us know in the comment section below if you have any good options, but I was able to find one foundation, two concealers, and one powder for under $6. One of my favorite foundations is the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. I just did a video fairly recently where I did a full face of e.l.f. Cosmetics. I'll link it below if you want to check it out, but I used this foundation. It's a really nice medium coverage foundation. You can sheer it out if you want something really light and you can build it up to get like medium, I would say like high medium coverage. Maybe not full coverage, but what's nice about this foundation is that it does even out redness. It evens out, you know, acne and scarring if you deal with that, but it allows your skin to show through. So it looks really nice. And whether you have oily skin or dry skin, I do think this foundation will work for you depending on how you prep your skin and set your foundation. They also have a really good shade range with a bunch of different undertones to choose from. I feel like e.l.f. has been doing a good job expanding their complexion products. So they are one of my favorite brands brands to recommend because not only do they keep their products pretty low, I do feel like they tend to be more inclusive than a lot of other affordable brands. I have to go with e.l.f. again for my concealer recommendations. The shade range is great and they have two different formulas to choose from. The first one is the 16 hour camo concealer. This one is a long wearing full coverage matte concealer that stays in place well. I would say that it's probably most comparable to the Tarte Shape Tape, but it's not quite as dry and it also blends out a little bit better than that one. So if you like that formula or you're looking for something similar to that, I would recommend the original 16 hour camo concealer, but they also have a hydrating version. This one has a little bit more of a satin finish. It's not quite as hydrating as some other concealers that I've tried, but I kind of like that because I feel like it does stay in place well and it doesn't crease as quickly as a lot of other hydrating concealers do. But I would say if you have normal or dry skin, you might prefer this one to the other one. And again, the coverage is nice on this. I love to combine them because I feel like they balance each other out really well. But honestly, you could go with either one depending on your personal skin type and your preferences. My favorite affordable powder is the Essence All About Matte Fixing Compact Powder. This is a super matte powder, so you're not going to want to pick this up if you have normal or dry skin but if you have oily skin this will be your best friend I always go through one of these during the summertime because I love using it to set my foundation into place but I also use it as a touch-up powder throughout the day if I'm looking a little bit oily like I am right now I'll just take a little bit on like a slightly damp sponge and kind of go over my face and it just kind of reduces that shine and it's not too heavy or cakey on the skin so it doesn't make my foundation look I guess heavy or cakey like I just said but it's only a few dollars it's very very lightweight so it's not like it adds any extra coverage it just helps to keep the skin matte longer Finishing up with lip products, I really try not to buy a lot of high-end lip products these days because there are so many good affordable options. So I have three different lip liner formulas that I do recommend. 
Without a doubt, my favorite lip liner formula would be the ColourPop Lippy Pencils. These retail for $6, and they have so many shades to choose from. They have a bunch of nudes, pinks, reds, even colorful tones, and I think that this formula is perfect. It's so smooth and creamy, so it goes on your lips really easily, but it also locks your lipstick into place all day long. They just have such a great shade selection, which I think is really important when it comes to lip liners. You're able to find your perfect nude no matter what your skin tone is and you can also find a bunch of really bright colorful shades as well. My next favorite would be the Essence Stay 8 Hour Lip Liners. These are so good. These actually feel like high-end lip liners. These are incredibly long wearing. Definitely more long wearing than the ColourPop Lippy Pencils. So if your number one goal is to lock your lipstick into place, these are the ones to go with. They don't have a ton of shades to choose from but I'm hoping they will release new shades eventually because it is a little bit of a newer product. These are retractable so you don't have to worry about sharpening them and Again, they're really creamy, so they do glide on easily, but these dry down to like a really intense, long-wearing matte finish, so they will not move all day long, and if you apply lipstick on top, it is not going anywhere. I also wanted to recommend the Makeup Revolution Satin Kiss Lip Liners. I don't have mine with me. I do have one shade, and I can't find it. I'm thinking maybe it's in my purse now that I'm thinking about it. If I do find it before I do the close-up shots, I'll include one. If not, I'll put a picture on the screen. But these are a good alternative to the ColourPop Lippy Pencils. I feel like they're pretty similar, and the reason why I wanted to mention these is because if you don't shop from ColourPop's website, if you have access to Makeup Revolution, these might be a good alternative for you. They are available at Ulta Beauty, and they do have a few shades to choose from, and I would say the formulas are very, very similar. The only downside is they don't have as many shades as ColourPop but again, it's a slightly newer product. I think they released it back in the spring, so maybe they'll expand the colors eventually, but I do think that those are a nice affordable option as well. There are so many good lipstick formulas at the drugstore that I could probably name like 10 different formulas that I recommend, but I wanted to narrow it down to some of my favorites, and again, these are ones that are available for under $6. I recently picked up this e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in the shade Cream, and I think that this formula is so good. If you like a traditional cream lipstick, this is going to be such a great option. These are very smooth, one swipe pigmentation, really creamy, comfortable to wear, and they have like staying power. They're not super shiny or super slippery or super thin. They kind of hug the lips and I feel like they have a good texture. They're not heavy on the lips, but they kind of remind me of the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche lipsticks without being as shiny and as hydrating, so I feel like they stay in place a little bit better. So I do recommend checking them out. I only have the shade Cream. I want to pick up a few more shades, but I'm not really wearing a lot of lipstick these days, so I'm kind of holding off, but I am enjoying this one. It's a great highlight shade. I typically wear it over another nude just in the center to brighten things up. You guys might have heard me mention the e.l.f. Sheer Slick Lipsticks once or twice or nine or ten times. I love this formula and if you are a fan of like a really hydrating almost balmy lipstick I think you'll enjoy these. These are sheer but I also feel like at the same time they have more pigmentation than other sheer formulas. You can build them up to be a little bit intense on the lips or you can sheer them out by blending them out but they're so comfortable, incredibly hydrating. I think the packaging is fun, the colors are bright and vibrant and if you like sheer formulas and you like their color selection, I think you'll really enjoy these because they're just easy to wear and really comfortable. Now if matte lipsticks are your thing, definitely try the NYX matte lipsticks. These have been around for a while and I feel like these used to be so popular on YouTube and I don't feel like a lot of people talk about them any longer but I still love them. They perform well. They're extremely lightweight, really, really thin. So if you like the look of a matte lipstick, but you aren't into matte liquid lipsticks, you'll enjoy these. They're not quite as long wearing as like a matte liquid lipstick, but they do give you a really pretty soft matte finish and they're really comfortable and they have a lot of shades to choose from as well. I will swatch a couple of my favorites for you guys, but they have colorful shades, nudes, and this is just like one of my old school YouTube favorites that I still use all the time. I just have one gloss formula to share with you guys. The Essence Plumping Nudes Glosses are so nice. I talk about these a lot, but these are kind of like staple glosses for me. In the past, 
you know, months ago when I would go out and I'd have a lip gloss in my purse and I would throw it on, this would be one of my go-to formulas. It's such a plush, cushiony formula. So it's really comfortable on the lips. It hydrates the lips, but on top of that, it just has like this beautiful sheen to it. They're pretty sheer. I mean, they have some sheer options and some more pigmented options, but overall, they're just easy to work with. You can throw them on and not have to worry about making a mess. The only thing for me is that the shades online don't accurately represent the actual colors, so I would recommend Googling swatches before you pick them up just to make sure you have like your perfect shade. The packaging's not the greatest, like my labels are pretty much worn off, but the actual product and the actual formula feels really high end, which I do think is a nice option because I think these are like what? $3 each, maybe four or five dollars. I'll put a link below so you guys can check them out, but I do recommend them. They kind of have like a little bit of a minty tingle, but it's not anything too intense like the Buxom glosses. So these are great. They feel really nice on the lips. Okay, that was a long one. I don't know how many of you guys are still watching, but if you are, thank you so much for watching today's video. I have some products that are under $10, so if you wanna see part two where I share the best products under $10, let me know in the comment section below, but I really appreciate you guys watching. I would love to know if you have any recommendations for us, so please share your affordable favorites below as well, and I will see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.